Put me in a difficult position of front window. Oh, cool. <laughs> that is the <laughs> How did the chef? <laughs> Where's my white jacket? Where's my white jacket? Can I see myself? No actors were hurt in the making of this film. Is it what? Yeah. Right, here we go. I'm off to my house on my toes is sad. Few more beers, I'm a big, big lad. But I can't really handle my drink this man. One day we'll be too old. I'm already too old, I've already been told. But this is the weekend, so booze it up until the night time's in. Yeah, this is the weekend, so booze it up. It came out of characters from a novel I wrote called Felton Batten. And the characters from that, people I've known in life, they're a mixture of incidents and people I know. So I wanted to write a screenplay about the main character called Billy French, ten years on from when he was in Felton Batten and his son had grown up and was a young man. I am uh, playing Simeon, the uh, lead. He works for his dad. His dad like, um, does a bit of building, plastering, that type of malarkey. I'm also my best friend's manager. He's a rapper but well, he's very holy, so he's like religious, which is very different from the usual type of rappers that you usually hear about. I also have a bit of an addiction for cocaine, and I get caught up in running like, drugs for a bit some heavies. I played a, quite an interesting part uh, by the name of Freddie who's a bit of a vicious sort of cop type character. He's a little bit bent, he sort of jumps both sides of the fence. Very ruthless, tries to get his own way and tries to sort of pursue these people that are part of his circle of uh, criminals, if you like. I spoke to my mentor, Chris, he's in the film, he's um, Mr. Omerud. He said that he spoke to Phil about me, gave me Phil's number, I contacted Phil, we had a little chat. He's telling me about the film and whatnot. I said, yeah, I don't mind, it sounds good, it sounds like a nice different kind of story. He invited me around to an audition and I must have just done really well. Uh, got Simeon. The pace of the development of the script always speeds up when you've got actors involved and when you're actually workshopping the script and you can see it being spoken and played out and acted out. One of the, the good things that we've been doing is to have a rehearsal process before we start filming. So when we come on set, we all kind of know what we're doing, we know where we want to go with the scenes and that's really, really helped it done a good hot, set, um, hot seating session where he kind of just let us find everything out about our characters and work at it together with each other and kept, kept an eye on us and things but he's been, he's been really nice. Rehearsals is really where you can sort of try stuff out, you know, and yeah, and there's no um, there's no constraints with time and stuff like that. So you can really experiment, plan stuff out, so that when you are actually on set, you've already gone through several different kind of variations of of the scene and of the character. Having those scenes shot a few years ago, that speeded up the development of certain parts of the script because. Uh, you knew what worked and what didn't work. One day I phoned him up and said, look, I've got a perfect location. It looks ideal for, for you and your script. Or a couple of scenes, maybe we could do a pilot over the weekend. And I got the guys from Escape Artists to come in and a few other people were to play parts, different parts. Young Gavin came in and done his rap and then sort of left him to it for the weekend, you know. But we, we managed to get a little pilot out. If you were as good at putting plaster up that wall as you are on health and safety, we'd be miles ahead by now. What are you doing? Massaging it? Look lively, son. It, yeah, it was at the loco when it was um, 
it was in transition from one owner to another, but there was work being done on it, and we had access to that. It had five bedrooms upstairs, and then the bar area and that downstairs. So it was ideal for what we were trying to do. Yeah. idea we done the pilot so he suggested that we'll put it through a hammer and thongs at the time you know and we'll, we'll make the film itself but before we got going we had a chance to stand it up at the Camden's Pe People's Theatre I think it was called and what is this I asked for school custom this is more like rice pudding it's got lumps bigger than your zits um, I was invited by the director's housemates to come and light a, the, the original play that I believe the film was like based on when I got a phone call, could you come down and help with the lighting We've only got the technical run through of the play to sort the lighting cues and then 15 minutes later perform the play to the public. The lads were good, they, they got on board, they don't mind being chucked in the deep end. And it was a read through really, so it wasn't too much of a problem, but it helped to see how, how it would perform, you know. We did have a slight, almost technical problem with getting our lighting cues right from laughing so much during the play. It took me a few years to get things going, you know, because we had to have a reason for doing it. And with the ex-offenders and um, escape artists going under, we took it on as a social enterprise, but to do it with ex-offenders, so turn it into an ex-offenders programme. Most of the cast here um, have had experience with the law in one way or the other, and I think that that's going to come out and it's going to show that effect on the screen. No, no two ways about that. There are, I'd say, five, six, seven people that are ex offenders, including myself, the co producer, the two leads, a couple of other actors. I've got the t shirt, I've got the scars, I've got do you know what I mean? I've, I've been there. I'm not talking just from somebody who studied it, you know. Yes, um, yes, well, crime statistics says this, that, and whatever. No, it doesn't work like that. You have to actually be there, be in the mix, and then you can actually use your experience. Okay, my experience might not be the same as another guy who's, who's been an ex-offender or whatever, but it's more or less the same road, it's the same path. If you've never crossed that, you never crossed that line, you will never know the difference. All, all these guys are, are done some sort of rehabilitation program through drama. And the thing is, once you've been through a program, that's usually pretty much it. I don't doubt that, you know, when you've lived an experience that you're acting out, it helps you in the, in, in the playing out of that experience and that role on set and on, you know, on stage or wherever you've got to play it out. When they get a chance like this, they've taken it with both hands. I think it's a, a good thing and, and good for them because they got much, much more out of it. I think it's going really well. Um, we are on speed. I think we're actually like, a bit ahead at the moment, so it's pretty good. That's good news. We're here in the wonderful Salisbury Club, filming the crack. Here's the bar. We've lost our lovely barmaid, Marie, but that's okay. I'm sure we'll find an equally lovely barmaid. And this is substituting for the Che Bar. An establishment on the Holloway Road in North London. When we were filming the Che Bar scenes, we had a long table out towards the end of the film, and everyone at, at the long table. Well, that was really nice. I, I thought that was great. So moments like that, when you really feel part of a, a collective kind of effort, you know. It's 
it's been it's been intense. But there's uh, there's such goodwill uh, and, and good nature and, and, and a good artistic collaboration. But yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the company. Everyone put pulling their weight. Hint, hint. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I've learnt more about the um, process, I'd say, of making a feature-length film and the whole structure and um, how everyone, kind of how the team goes together and the whole thing really, you get a better picture of it than I did before and how it all works. People enter into it for their own reasons. You know, whether it was because you wanted to be in the filmmaking, if you wanted to be acting or something, it was more about people coming together and working together and it didn't seem to matter what, who was doing what. But if you was there on the day, people didn't mind washing up if they were supposed to be doing something else like, you know, a clapperboard or camera work. The high points for me is having watched the crew grow in themselves, as not just as technical people, but as, as people themselves. This whole experience has been, like, holistic in a way. I've seen people blossom uh, in the sense that they've really, their confidence has grown and they've made friendships. I really enjoyed um, you know, working with Kieran you know, to make that relationship between Horace and Simi. I mean, that was really fun. I felt like even from before we started filming, we kind of, kind of worked out a, a relationship that, that just kind of seemed to work. And it was just, a, you know, it was nice. It was like, you know, it's nice falling into a friendship like, as if we you know, really have been friends for a while. Kieran and I get on really well. So like any scenes that we have together, we're just like messing about in the background, which is great. And it really works for our characters as well, because they're both supposed to be quite good friends. I don't think we could have got a better crew of people. It was just one of the magical things when people come together, you meet, you don't really know each other. And then you get onto a project and I think there's friendships are forged for life. If only most of this crew were doing another project, I would, I would try and like, make sure that I had the time to fall in behind and sort of support it. It's been really nice to kind of sit back and watch their role in it, the production, and I'm really interested in all the technical stuff and they do a fantastic job. Filmmaking is a lot easier now than it was. We're shooting on a Canon 5D. Now it's democratised filmmaking in a way, you know, having equipment that doesn't cost a fortune. I was asked by Phil, who I've worked with before on certain videos, to come down and help out with um, helping out with filming. From my experience, I've always worked in a very small cruise, with me normally taking all the roles, when it's mainly just me doing everything. It's very quick and it's very, it's very, uh, it's very energetic. And on this set, all the roles are spread out, so what there needs to be is a lot of communication and that obviously slows down the process but it's much more intricate and it's much more much more thought through and for me it's been a great learning experience into di people's different roles and how to get the best out of out of each person i've worked as a sound recorder on the in the production which i'm pretty well and now we're at the stage that the, the visual editing is done and the music editing is done as well, and now I'm doing the sound and dialogue editing of the film, which is probably the, the slowest and longest process. We have also been in, in the studio recording musicians for the film, and uh, voiceover, as well as some, some ADR. It's a bit like a visual editing, I guess, but instead of two or three tracks for visuals, you have I don't know, 15 tracks for sound, and you have to all align them and listen to every single bit. You listen to it once and your ears get used to it and your ears get tired in a way. Whatever is familiar to you, you end up liking. So even if it sounds bad, you end up liking it because you've listened to it so many times. One issue I had with filming by myself was I would, I would make continuity mistakes a lot. Having someone like Dean on set has been very helpful in that process. Dean was very important. I don't think I've met anybody who, who, who could quite spot something was wrong, you know, if, if you had to uh, pick the glass up in your left hand rather than your right hand, he would notice. Uh, and I believe that he's gone on now to work in some fantastic places like the BBC I took him on, so it goes to show just how lucky we were to have him at that point.
the director wanted a lot of uh, R&B and uh, soul music, as well as some, some reggae. Sometimes I would make suggestions, even though, but the director also had a set suggestion, so... Uh, and sometimes his suggestions I would challenge and say and show him how a different style might sound. And sometimes we would choose this, sometimes we would choose that. You've got to weigh up, there's good and bad, and the good, the good thing was being low budget, there was no pressure from anyone to make a certain kind of film. We had the artistic freedom to make the film we wanted to make. In the script, you know, we had to smash the front window of the van. Well, we couldn't do that. We couldn't afford to get a new windscreen for the van. So then you have to think of more imaginative ways to get the point of that scene across. What is it you're trying to say there? Well, can you say it in another way? But they can't do that fight scene too many times because it's they're pushed yeah. against the van. And we'll we'll they try to do it bruised. in one take, but then we have yeah. some like cutaways of knives. Yeah, 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 exactly. that yeah, yeah. You ready to go? Do your big scene? Yeah. Yeah? You've been rehearsing it, yeah? Yeah, yeah kind of. I'm busy there. Yeah, yeah. Feeling bruised and battered already. <laughs> we sort this out! We sort this out! We sort this out! Get the fucking way! We sort this out! Get the fucking way! The high points of people suggesting things that really came off. Frankie's introduction of Alan and that character, DCI Cooper, I think that was a real addition. And that was a lovely moment which was totally unseen. And, uh, you know, it, I, I think it's added a lot to the film. Alright, good. I just had a right giggle with this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's hilarious. The new, the, the bits have added. I think it's gonna look. I think it's gonna look really good. Which one? But the the bits they've added to the okay. scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I like really it. good. Now don't forget my little lump. Now will you, Fred? I'll give you a lump, you greedy. You turn me over, and you'll go for a ride. We understand one another. You're making me cry, Fred, and my tears have made me blind. You don't know what that is, do you? That's Shakespeare, that is. But out of your league, innit, Fred? Hey? I was with Frankie, and um, Frankie said, come on, jump in the car, we'll have, a, we'll have a few line runs, come up to Cambridge, I'm shooting this film. I said, all right. Uh, next thing I know, we got there, and I was arresting him. Um, suddenly, I was in the film. He gave me his clothes out the back of his car, and um, I was a bank cop. I was suddenly roped into the film, and I was arresting Frankie. I've been fitted up carrying some drugs. And um, as you can see, we're in a private street now. And in this particular scene, I come out and the police swoop on me, basically. See that? You're gutless. You're going away, my son. There you go, Now take him down a fing neck. No, I was minding my own business, and uh, but it was very nice to uh, get involved and be invited. What started off as quite a serious film with comedic elements to it has ended up as a bit of a dark comedy, really. We've got, I think, we, the, the nature of the film changed as we went along because that was the way uh, the collective opinion was developing around it, you know, with the actors and the people working on it. I play Wilkinson, who's the factory manager, the factory where Sarah works. I trained 25 years ago at Goldsmiths, and then I worked in theatre, theatre and education. Did quite a lot of advertisements, a few student films then. Um, I've returned recently after taking up a screenwriting course, funnily enough. It's all the different experiences through acting that I get to have as a, as a character and things that I've never tried before. Um, like all the intimate scenes between me and Simi and that's something as an actor I've never done and it's just the different challenges I can face, it's, um, it's really exciting to do things like that. I know the director and he gave me the script a little while ago. Um, I like the script. Funnily enough, it wasn't, Wilkinson wasn't the part that I, I had in mind but um, I'm really enjoying it. 
it's not a part I would normally have gone for on reading a script and I think that's one of the things that actors often don't always know the parts that are best for them so it's good to have people looking in and thinking yeah you could play that part and uh, you know and giving you a go at doing it. I played um, a bloke called um, Jake Lyle who was the sort of a landlord, dodgy landlord kind of guy who was uh, ended up ripping off um, well, yeah, the uh, boss of the main character really so um, not a very nice person really. I love playing bad guys because they're so easy. You know, the, the hardest thing is playing the good guy because, you know what I mean, then you, have to, then you have to work. But being the bad guy, you can sort of play it to the hill. Really. I mean, it seems to be running very smoothly, very smoothly. Everyone's very professional. So that's, you know, that's really good. And everyone seems really committed to the project. So I'm really impressed with that. Yeah. Without the backing and support of the students and the, the film studies department, Anglia Ruskin, the, the film just couldn't have been made. Anglia was absolutely fantastic in what they offered us and gave us all the facilities as well. You know, people give up their houses, their own accommodation for us, a team of us to come round there and work. That's it, don't, that's it Neil, don't open it widely, that's good, that's good. You knock your money out in there. And I can't put a mark on that. Can you say that again, please? You knocking one out in there. When we started filming, to see how that summer went, I think everybody got fun out of it. I certainly did. It was one of the best summers I, I spent. Not only working, meeting with everyone, cooking all their dinners was, was really exciting. Though he has been the produce, producer, he has really worked hard behind scenes and helped so much, so I would like to thank Eddie for all his hard work that he has cooked for us. <laughs> Actually, I'd just like to say, first of all, thanks so much for the soup, because I thought it was absolutely magnificent. Eddie's soup, you've got to try it if you never have you know? So we had lost our cook and he has really helped, helped us, so I'd like to give a big thank you to Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have been fed without yourself, uh, Eddie, and all the rest of it that you put together with the film. Even appearing in it like you did, I think it's, it is a big collaboration. You, you, you'd be helping each other all the time. Even if it, you know, it's a matter of being called in to do a little scene, you're short on a, a, a character, so I can't be facing it. <laughs> there was a, a, an officer, an arresting officer. You know, it was one other. I think that was when we was raising. Uh, the young girl up, but because I've been in the previous scene, I had to hide my face, so you, you wouldn't really notice me there. You might see me cat, but that's about it. Actually, when things went wrong and we had a laugh about it, I think that was one of the high, that was one high point when things when we just block a scene, you know, and things would go wrong, and instead of like getting tense and upset about it, we would have a good laugh about it. We sort this out. Cut, cut. <laughs> 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 it's, it's always more fun to be on set because things happen and there's more energy going on. Whereby when you're in your room on your own, you kind of it can be a bit mind numbing. The whole experience of that, I think, is a bit of a high point as well. That's like, been part of the team. Everyone's just on it. It was nice because there's quite young uh, people there doing their first film, and the more sort of old, experienced people doing it as well. So no, it was good. It was good. Obviously, from an actor's point of view, you see people working very hard, youngsters, you know, from all walks of life that were involved in it, and it's just a fantastic opportunity to work with these youngsters. I, I had a great time. It's been lovely, it's been really warm. Um, all the crew are really dedicated to their jobs and asking if you need, you know, anything all the time. Yeah, it's just lovely to see all those young people really into it. I mean, you know, everyone's chipping in, everyone's giving it everything. It's what I love about acting, it's the meeting people and making new connections with things. Meeting new people is always a nice thing and I think everyone showed that they're willing to help each other. I think everyone's fairly happy and it, and it was a very, very happy camp. Probably the happiest camp I've ever seen on a set, you know. It's been a memorable experience which I shall cherish. We've made it because people have committed themselves to it and it's been a collective effort. It's going to be very authentic and I think that's the main reason that it's going to be a success, you know. Everyone's just put in a really good effort. So I kind of, I think it's going to end up being a really nice piece. All I can do is wait with total anticipation and excitement for the end product. 
I learnt so much and, um, and met some great people, people who are really talented in what they do, and that was a privilege. It's not the Friday daytime, no more ain't spending my wages on drink and draw. Okay, I'm twisting it. <laughs> Are you filming it? Just do that. You see this? Sleeping on the job. Typical. And I've messed up my night once more. Next day I'm laying in my bed till four. O'clock in the afternoon, and the last thing I remember was the moon spinning and spinning outside my room. And oh my god, this is my favourite tune. Throwing up a quarter past ten, and the rest of the night waffling to my friends about nothing. And I swear I'm never gonna drink again, but this is the weekend. You're in shock, by the way, Phil. <laughs> FYI, small details. Oh, Phil, by the way, you're in the show. So boozy up until the night time's in. Yeah, this is the weekend. So boozy up until the night time's in.